great round of applause for the Lord Jesus. My beloved friends, the Word of God brings us many blessings. The Word of God broadens our understanding, and one of them is in Psalm 34. Let's take a look at verse 9. I would like to start with this psalm because today God has many things to reveal to your heart. No matter your problem or what it is that you need, no matter how much you suffer and no matter how much you feel forsaken, when you hear the Word of God, believe Him. If you pay attention to Him, a new world will be disclosed to you every day. Even if your illness is incurable or even if your problem seems unsolvable to you. In Psalm 34, verse number 9, King David wrote the following, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. Now, here to fear means to respect. Respect the word of the Lord God, all of you who fear the Lord. You have to respect what he says. Let's say that the word of God touched you and knocked you down on the floor. Say that you had some purpose in life and it knocked you down on the floor. You must take it. I fell down and got up much better because I was standing ready to fall down from where I wouldn't be able to stand up again. Because the Lord God will never ever do you any harm. If God shows you that something is not good for you, forget it. He is the creator. He made us. He is incredibly good. The previous verse says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So God would never hurt anyone, no matter who they are. If he showed you something is not good, then it is not. But this is the negative side of preaching. What about the positive side? Did he show you that something is good? Then you can believe that this is really, really good for you. For example, here in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it talks about faith here. This chapter 11 is the so-called Faith's Hall of Fame. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when you hear the word of God, you have contact with the real world, which is the world of God, the spiritual world, as you've never had before. It doesn't even matter if the person is used to working with spirits. They had no knowledge whatsoever of God's world, that the other world is the world of deceit. And no matter how hard they worked, they couldn't see the light, but now they can. They are seeing the world of God. And when they are in contact with God's word, they can be sure that God will show them so many things because faith comes with listening to God's word and this is the certainty of things that are coming and it will teach you the things that are happening right before your eyes and you don't see. Actions that you have to take but you didn't and that bring you closer to God and bring the Lord God closer to you. Decisions that will determine your life and that will determine that God will be closer to you from then on. So as it says here, now faith is the substance, the certainty of things hoped for. Because many things you didn't even know that existed or that you could even imagine that existed and make use of them. But there are so many things. The Holy Bible is a book that when you read it with your human mind, you like it already. But when you read it under God's anointing, your spirit is enlightened and you see so many possibilities. You see so many blessings there and faith gives you access to all of those things and you begin to expect them. I'm going to get that now. I'm going to get that blessing. Things that you had thought, this is hopeless for me. No way, I'll never get what I want. Faith gives you this certainty and it gives you this contact with these things from God and it's the evidence of things not seen. But I don't see it, but I have faith. I will get it, I will change. This is my blessing. And then you will see that it is not necessary to blackmail someone, to bribe anyone, to ask a friend to help you out, to help you get something from God. You will get everything that belongs to you for free, simply through you believing, by listening to the word of God. Now, in Romans 10, 17, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Therefore, brethren, you have to always respect the word of God. 
If you don't like it, don't say, I didn't like it, I don't want to hear this word. At the right time, if you want to, God will show you that it is true. It's just that we were born and we were raised so far from God and far from his word, actually, from God's presence, that we don't understand anything about God's world. But now, when we respect his word, as it says in Psalm 34, 9, Brethren, fear the Lord, you his saints. Respect what the Lord is telling you. Well, I don't understand it, but God is speaking. I will get it. And why am I going to get it? Because those who are serving our God, those who serve God shall not lack anything. Psalm 34, going back to Psalm 34, verse 9, there's no lack of inspiration. There's no lack of power. There's no lack of solutions. There's no lack of grace whatsoever from our Lord God. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. How much would you pay to try to get it and couldn't get it because it's not about money? When you respect our Lord, you have access. I didn't know it was like that. If another person can come before the Lord, understand their place, and receive their blessing, why can't I do that? Now I'm going to respect the Word, and the Word will now teach me. Does it teach me, Dr. Suarez? Yes, it does. In the book of Job, chapter 5, Job is before the book of Psalms. The... The patriarch Job wrote the following, Job 5, verse 9. He wrote, he's talking about God. Who does great things and unsearchable? Now listen here, brethren. What else does he say here? Marvelous things without number. You can't count them. You simply cannot search study and find out everything that the Lord God does because he does so many marvelous things without number. This is beyond human capacity. There is no device in the world that could study everything that God does. He does marvelous things that are so unsearchable. The human mind is searchable. A few years ago, scientists were able to map a human genome. I kept thinking, what is a genome made of? When are they going to map what genomes are made of? And so on. But they did it, but not God's. No matter how hard they work, God is infinitely greater. And Job was the first book of the Bible to be written. And the people back in the Middle Ages would laugh because when Job wrote, he said that deep inside the earth was revolving fire. What do you mean revolving fire? There's nothing like that. But today science proves that the Earth's interior is magma, which is like revolving fire. But who told Job that? He who does unsearchable, impressive, and great things. And Job, in his loyalty towards God, his faith led him to understand things that, humanly speaking, couldn't be understood. Today they are proved. Today, you, fearing the Lord God, your faith will take you to understand things that cannot be known by the human mind unless they are revealed to us by God. But someday they will be known because he will allow it. Now, as for right here, what is written in Job is quite clear. Who does great things, and here by great, he means it goes beyond our mind's capacity of understanding them, unsearchable things, and so many marvelous things without number. These days I was thinking, I was reading a science magazine, an article on whales, specifically on sperm whales, explaining that they have their own language and develop the language between their own group. Another group cannot understand it. I thought, the Lord God is so wise. When he was creating the whale, how did he put all this knowledge inside the whale? Now we're talking about whales. What about those very tiny fishes we don't even see? We don't get it, but they can do everything they need. Procreate and, and take care of the youngest. They do everything right. The birds and animals and so on. So the Lord God created them with all the wisdom. They are without number. There are so many things that he did things that only he is able to do. Now just think, if you fear and if you respect God, what can the Lord God do for you today, brethren? The preaching of the word, which you have to respect, this means fearing God. It reveals God's ability that he didn't tell anyone. 
Cleansing the leper, for example. Let's take a look at this here. It's in Matthew chapter 8, and it reads as follows. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. I think that deep inside this man's heart, there was a bit, a bit of a, a bit of a holy mix-up inside him because he wasn't allowed to get close to the people, the multitude. But why couldn't he get close to the multitude? Because when the person was a leper, they absolutely could not get close to anyone who was healthy. So he had to stay away from everyone. He was out there and Jesus came up the mountain, the Mount, the Mount of Beatitudes, of the Sermon of the Mount, and then Jesus opened his heart. Jesus taught us the constitution of the kingdom of heaven. This man was listening, and he liked it. He said, this is everything I needed to hear. But he wanted to be cleansed. He has the power, but is he willing to cure me? Because whoever speaks as he did has the power. If he wants to, he can cleanse me. If he is not willing, I'll still be a leper, but I'll be closer to him. He was. The Word of God, you see, um, uh, the preaching of the Word of God reveals skills that many times are not declared. Until then, Jesus had not said he was willing to cleanse everybody. He had not yet received our illnesses and infirmities. Today, he has. Today, we have no doubt about it, but he had. And he came, fell down before Jesus, and worshipped him. We don't know for how long. We don't know what he said in his prayers to him. But when Jesus paid attention to him, he prayed to Jesus. And Jesus said, what do you want? If you are willing, you can cleanse me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand, touched him, and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. And the man was cleansed. Did you know that this I am willing is God's answer to you? Of course it is. Because if I come to him, I have a problem. And I say, Lord God, cleanse me. And he says, I'm not willing to. Then he can't be God. Because our God doesn't choose between his children, his creations. He cannot look at you and say, no, I don't like your face. But I look like him. He made me this way. You look like him. He made you like that. He created us. How can you not like something that you have personally made? Sometimes the person doesn't like himself, but he shouldn't talk like that. No, if God made me like that, it's because he wanted me to look like this, and I'm going to be what he wants me to be. So when he said, I am willing, he was giving an answer to all of mankind. No matter your nationality, where you come from, or what your job is, absolutely nothing matters. God is willing to cleanse you. That's the word. That's his word. But how can I understand this? By listening. He heard the Sermon of the Mount, and he was enlightened. He was probably confused. Wants, doesn't want, because he can. Nobody has ever talked like he has talked. Whoever has this understanding can surely do anything. But he was still doubting Jesus. When the Lord Jesus allowed him to talk, he was looking, he was worshiping Jesus. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. I know you have the power. I just don't know if you want to. And Jesus said, I am willing. He is telling you this. He wants to change your life. But why doesn't he? Brother, there are so many steps that we have to follow. Sometimes it is immediate, the complete healing, because the sin isolated us from God. And we have to come closer. And we can only come closer through faith. Come closer through the word. No one can come to me, said Jesus, unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. The word will enlighten us. Then our faith will draw us to him. Some people, when enlightened by the word, they hide because it shows that they are living in error that they don't want to stop doing. And this way, it is very hard for God to operate. But when they do allow it, when they take a stand with God, then they get this, I am willing from Jesus, I am willing, be cleansed. Psalm 125 reads as follows. If you have your Bible, open it to Psalm 125. 
It talks about those who trust the Lord. Let's see if you trust the Lord. It reads, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. When you trust the Lord God, you are strong. Nothing moves you. Anyone can say whatever he or she wants. An angel can come down and say to you, God wants you to know that the devil has the power to change into an angel of light. He looks like an angel of God, but he cannot heal you. You are bound because he cannot deny his word. What he told the leper is good enough for me. He is willing to cleanse me. You don't have to take that from anyone. The most renowned, most famous preacher comes and says, look, God wants you to know that he is not willing to cleanse you. You are serving the devil because when he, when he cleansed the leper, whatever he told him is good for me. God can't solve your problem. He can. So those who trust in the Lord will become like Mount Zion. Mount Zion. It will never, ever move. Nothing will move it, and you will be forever unwavering. Oh, but you know, I paid attention to... Why would you ever listen to what you are not supposed to hear? Why did you allow the devil to influence you and kill the fire of joy that was burning deep inside your heart? Come back. Jesus, I am willing, and that means I am willing to cleanse you. I am willing to free you. I am willing to bless you, and I am willing to do it because today I have faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And today you have faith, and God will bless you. Let's go to the real-life drama, or we won't have time. Go ahead, Maestro. <laughs> Before I embraced Jesus, my life was completely destroyed to the addiction to alcoholic beverages, to alcohol and also to nicotine. I would start drinking beer at 10 in the morning and would drink all day long. I lived with my sister and she suffered a lot. My nephews were young, you know, and I even got to the point of asking my nephews to go to buy beer for me because many times I couldn't even get up from the couch. After some time, my sister was introduced to Jesus and she would pray for me. I was an alcoholic for a very, very long time. I believe um, I drank for 20 years or so. Whenever I asked her to come to church, she would always say, I would think about it. And then she would tell me, look, for me, this believer thing is nothing but illusion. The pastor only wants money from the poor. I couldn't sleep. I wasn't happy. I went to the church. I prayed. I looked for God. I prayed for her. I wanted to live. At the same time, I wanted to die. Everything started early in the morning. I had drank a lot, really a lot. I spent the whole night drinking. I was very, very depressed. I was very sad because I really wanted to put an end to that, but I couldn't. Then I picked up the TV remote and really started looking for something to watch. And then I saw Dr. R. R. Sawadis, and he said, you lying on the bed who are feeling totally depressed, get up from that bed. There is hope for you. I said, oh my God, he's talking to me. And he said the following, uh, you who are, uh, we are in, in real need of, of financial help and we would like to send you a book, Praying to Change the World. Then I immediately became interested. If I read this book, then maybe I can be transformed. It was God working already. I remember that when the bank opened, I was there at the bank making a deposit for the church and be. And before I used to call them thieves, you know, I, I sponsored them right then. And soon the Lord started changing my spiritual life. And from that day on, I felt that something had changed. My sister, right? She would invite me to come to the church. When she arrived there, I, I was always drunk. I remember I would sit in the gallery because of the smell of the booze, right? But for some time then, 
I would come to the church and then come home and drink. I hadn't made a decision yet, you know. Then one day I was sitting in the gallery and that day Pastor Jaime gave his testimony. When I heard Pastor Jaime's testimony, so similar to what I had been living at that moment, I remember I said, Jesus, this, this godly man that preaches the word, he, he worked it out. Oh Lord, I'm sure I will work it out too. And that day I felt very hopeful. I said, Jesus, my life will change. I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I will never drink and never smoke again. God really changed her life. I made my decision. I was baptized. The Lord put me to do the work. And today I, and today I try my best to help people that have been through the same problem. My life has been transformed. That's beautiful. Praise the Lord. Sister, looking at your angelical face, no one could think you were a heavy boozer. <laughs> That's true, doctor. A heavy soaker, right? That's true, doctor. I used to drink a lot, doctor, and the Lord Jesus transformed me. And when you are evangelizing he... at the door, as they showed in the video, and people walk by and say this is all about money and people... They speak a lot of nonsense, but that started a long time ago. They do it to tarnish the gospel. Because, of course, if you have to pay the rent, who do you ask money from? Those who come to the church. You cannot do something wrong like steal or put pressure. If someone comes in ill, you have to pray for, for free. If they need advice, you have to give it freely. As Jesus says, you receive freely and give freely. Has anyone ever offended you out there, sister? Yes, many times, doctor. And what do you many say to times. them? Many times. Doctor, I try to tell them what I experienced, what I lived. I try to show people uh, about the sponsorship, which reaches out to many souls, just like it reached out to me and many others as well, right? I also t I tell them that the the work we sponsor is absolutely not it's not vain to buy blessings but it's, to be able to help the gospel not to buy blessings but to be able to help the gospel to bring How souls to How long have you Jesus. been steady and living with Jesus? 14 years, doctor. And what what about the person who brought you to the church? Who is that person? The the person that that brought me, my yeah. sister who was Let next me to me. Let me talk to her then. Was it worth it, sister? Yes, Dr. Suarez. It was all worth it because for me, there were times when I thought, God, why? You have already touched my life and I see my sister like that now. I wouldn't say I gave up hope, but many times I cried and asked God. I wanted that immediately. It took some time, but today, But she's been with Jesus God, for 14 years. That's a long time with Jesus. Yes, 14 years that she's been with Jesus. Excuse me? Well, it's been 14 years it's that been she's been with Jesus, so it was all Jesus. worth it. It was worth it. Absolutely And sister, worth what about it. that book, Praying to Change the World? Praying to Change the World. Did it help you? It did, doctor. The, the day you announced it, it was funny. I couldn't see a thing, but I was able to, to, to take note of the address Faith to make the deposit. Faith does things we can't dream yes. of. Then in my heart, I said, Jesus, it's, it's prayer that changes the world. So this book then will change my life. What surprised me the most is that I, I actually did a test. I will pay, I will send the paper. If they send me the book, then this church is for real. And did they send you the they book? They sent me the book. <laughs> then praise the Lord. Yes, it Postman, did. Postman, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what if the postman had thrown it away? This is heavy. <laughs> She would have been mad at us, and that would have been a mistake. Praise the Lord, it wasn't. Let's take the first question now, please. Doctor, is it wrong to go out with people from another denomination? But why? Is she a believer or trying to be one? <laughs> I don't mean to say anything, but you talked about going out with people, right? The right thing to do is date only one person. I mean, then you engage them and marry them. To date people is very wrong, I mean. But of course, the religion doesn't really matter. If the person is a believer, Then they have God's blessing. Second question now. Why does Matthew 13 say they'll lose the little they have? Jesus said, well, for whoever has to him more will be given. He reveals it. The person holds it. 
But who, who, whoever doesn't believe, what they have will be taken away. That is, God gave. He lost it and he thinks he has it, but he doesn't. He only has this shape. The essence is gone. Then it will be taken away from them. So now let's go to open your heart, please. Dr. Swadis, my whole family knows the Word of God because for some time we attended the church but failed to stay firm and therefore lost our strength. My sons are lost also. The eldest has diabetes and lives with a woman who's only interested in his money. My other son has a wife who already has two children and lives away from me. The youngest is on the computer all the time. I volunteered to pay driving lessons for him to get his license, but he didn't want to. He started the course but failed to finish it. He can't do anything. He starts things and never finishes. I need help because I'm addicted to nicotine and I can't quit. I'm depressed because of that. Dr. Swadis, I really want to live for God. What can I do with my life? My beloved sister, you've been in the Lord's house before. Come back right now, Jesus said. Yet you don't want to come to me to get life. It's not only about coming to church. You have to come to Jesus and convert yourself so that things don't get worse and God can give you the victory. And he wants to give you victory. Let me pray for those at home and then for you. Father, today, right now, I come in the name of Jesus to bless those who are at home. Bless, O oh God, those who are bearing this very moment a very heavy burden, those who are stumbling in life, those whose life has not been very easy, those who have not been smiling, and God, those whose lives have been very sad. Because God, just like the evil working at this woman's house with her children, with herself, and Father, I now rebuke this evil. Dear Lord, please put your hand on the place this person is suffering right now. Show your power and heal them because I say, Devil, get everything that belongs to you, the spirit of disturbance, of suffering, of defeat, of bursitis, of tendinitis, of nephritis, of arthritis. I command you right now, go away. Take away all your evil in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and amen.